नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स दिस इज एनजे होस्ट ऑन दिस चैनल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अवर डिस्कशन ऑन द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग योर फॉर्च्यून अवेकनिंग ईयर दैट एज पर एस्ट्रोलॉजी इट्स द नाइन्थ हाउस ओनली व्हिच टेल्स अबाउट द प्रोस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ अवर लक ऑफ अवर फॉर्च्यून अलोंग विद अदर गुड वर्च्यूज गुड डीड्स रिलीजियस ऑस्टेरिटीज बट स्पेसिफिकली इफ यू हैव टू लुक एट इट from the perspective of understanding your fortune and when fortune is going to give its glory its gift to you so what is the right technique to do that see friends i have already made an individual video on uh, explaining the importance of the ninth house that if you're going to have a strong ninth house how it is going to impact or contribute to your success in all other areas of your life you can freely go to my channel and watch that video but in this video we will try to understand the most fortune awakening event so guys in order to understand that first of all you have to understand that fortune cannot be restricted only to the prospects of wealth or for example if someone had some tragedy or had a very close brush with any form of tragedy and he got to this resolution that i am very fortunate here i'm talking about that particular event of your life which actually established you in your life now this could be for an actor he got his first movie released or someone who is in a government environment he cleared his uh, upsc or ias job exam or someone who was an entrepreneur that person got his first big break or he launched his company at that particular age so this is something which i am trying to tell you over here as per the fortune awakening concept that the event which actually established you in your life the year which actually gave you one very big important gift from the gods so that is something which we will try to understand in this video so friends as you know that it's the ninth house only which tells about the prospects of our fortune ninth house is so blessed it has got so much goodness inherent in it that no matter which so ever planet is going to go in the ninth house that planet is going to bound to give results in a very graceful way so now one approach of calculating your uh, most fortune awakening year could be done in a way that you have to monitor your ninth house and you have to study the influence of the planets over there and before you head to that direction first of all you have to understand this concept of planetary maturation age like our sages they have ascribed they have mentioned a particular age when all the planets like there is a fixed assigned age for every planet when that planet attains its maturity and start giving its results in its full dignity so like for example the planet which attains its maturity at earliest is the planet jupiter so jupiter matures at 16 years of age second comes the planet sun which generally matures at 21st year after that it's the planet moon which matures at the age of 24 then venus which matures at 25 mars at 28 mercury at 32 saturn at 36 rahu at 42 and ketu at 48 so important is that being a psychic being an astrologer whether you are assessing your own chart or you are uh, doing astrology as a profession and you on daily basis look at many people's chart so whenever any planet is gaining significance in any individual's life that significance or that indication you are going to get from all other areas like i have seen all those people's chart in whose case like for example if mars is a strengthened planet so not only mars is going to have strong ashtavarga points in the majority of the divisional charts you are going to find mars in its either own sign friendly sign exalted and even from the perspective of the numerology and from all other directions even the nakshatra placement of the planets you might find the predominance of martian nakshatras as well like which is uh, mrikshara chitra dhanishta so you can fairly say with confidence if you are getting this indication from so many other parallel directions that mars is a single uh, strong planet in this native chart so then in that case 28th year could be the fortune awakening year for that particular native 
same goes with the planet sun if you are finding sun to be exalted in someone's chart and sun is not losing its dignity even in majority of the divisional charts and rest of the planets or majority of the planets are also concentrated or sitting in the nakshatra of sun which could be a uh, kritika utra falguni so i mean to say in those kind of circumstances you can fairly get this idea that sun is a strong planet in this particular natives chart not only the personality the behavior the personality traits are going to be driven by the nature of sun which is about nobility which is about doing good virtues which is about uh, showcasing good leadership skills but at the same time 21st year could be the most important year in the life of this particular native where because of the support of the luck native is going to get some good success in their life now friends even if you will do the scrutinization of the 9th house so as you know that 11th house if 11th house is the house of your wish fulfillment from the 11th house if you will go 11 houses ahead you are going to reach the 9th house from the 5th house which is the house of your intellect so if you'll go 5 houses ahead of that you're going to reach the 9th house so it is the highest of the intellect highest of the wish fulfillment and if 10th house is the house of your karma so 12 houses to the 10th house is the 9th house so i mean to say there is a stage when your 9th house get activated where even if you are not going to do any deeds or the support of the luck fortune divine grace is going to give you result of your deeds so that is how you can relate the signification or importance of fortune and ninth house in our life now guys we will come back to the point where we will try to understand how to determine that fortune awakening year in your life so that is very simple first of all if in your case there are planets concentrated or sitting in the ninth house ninth house is so fortunate is so blessed that those planets are definitely going to be bound to give good result at the time of their maturity so if in your case in your ninth house you have moon sitting over there so in that kind of situation we can say this thing with confidence that 24th year of this particular native's life could actually bring some good event in the life of that person now it all comes down to how much strength moon is gaining in your chart if you have sun present over there then 21st year could be a fortune awakening event if jupiter is present over there uh, 16th year could be a fortune awakening event and if in your case you have two planets or you have three planets present over there in the 9th house so guys in that kind of scenario what you have to do is that for a uh, maturity age of jupiter if you have jupiter and sun present in your 9th house so jupiter's age of maturity is 16 sun's age of maturity is 21 you have to add these two number which is going to give you 16 plus 21 is going to give you 37 then you have to divide it by 2 so you are going to get the answer as 18.5 so uh, 18th year and around 6th month a uh, sixth month of the 18th year of the life of the native could actually bring some very good event in his or her life or roughly speaking the time period from 18 to 19 years of age could bring some very good result in the life of that native and even if you have for example three or four planets present over there so what you have to do is that you have to look at this chart which you are seeing in your screen you have to add the maturity age of those four planets present over your ninth house and then you have to divide it by 4 and the resulting year which you are going to get that year is definitely going to bring some very good result in the life of that particular native so guys that is the approach which you have to follow if you have planets present over there in your ninth house but let's say for example if you do not have any planet present over there then in those kind of situation what you have to do is that you have to see the zodiac sign present over there in your ninth house and the lord of that zodiac sign for example for an aries ascendant native in his ninth house you are going to find the sign of sagittarius so the lord of sagittarius is the planet jupiter so that means that 16th year can actually bring some very good result in the life of native or it could actually pave path in giving some good fortunate opportunity to this particular native so that is guys one approach of calculating someone's fortune awakening year and let's say for example if you have got some good raj yogas getting formed in your chart so for a leo ascendant native if his ascendant lord sun 
is exalted in the ninth house so then in that kind of situation you can fairly say that 21st year is definitely going to bring some very fortune awakening event in the life of native for example if you will take into consideration the case of a scorpio ascendant native if in a scorpio ascendant native's case the ascendant lord mars is going to be debilitated in the ninth house so even in that situation where mars is weak and if it is not going through any cancellation of debilitation because of the contribution of any other yoga so even in that situation 28th year is definitely going to be a fortune awakening event the only difference which is going to come is that the intensity of the grace of luck or fortune of the happening of that event might get little bit diminished so that is how you can see or correlate the energies or result in the life of any particular individual and friends when we talk about the planets like saturn rahu and ketu in whose case the age of maturity comes in the second half of life so you have to understand this thing specifically when we talk about the planet saturn saturn in itself represents maturity saturn is the planet of anubhav experience so i mean to say the success which is going to come that might come after facing lot of struggle lot of hardship it might come bit late in the second half of the life but that success is going to come in a very big packaging and the native is definitely going to be capable enough of retaining that success which is going to come in his or her life and friends when we talk about the nodes rahu and ketu their age of maturity comes at the end but they hold the potential and capacity to bring sudden unpredictable overnight big success they represent surprise element unpredictability so because of which it all comes down to how much strength rahu and ketu are gaining in your chart and what exactly is your inclination or your aspirations in the life for example if you have rahu present in your uh, ninth house and rahu is present in the sign of uh, mercury like in the gemini sign in the uh, virgo sign even in the venus in sign like taurus libra or even in aquarius so in those kind of circumstances scenario even the majority of the planets are present in rahu's nakshatra or in the navamsa chart in other divisional chart rahu is not losing its strength so the 42nd year can definitely be a fortune awakening event same goes with the case of ketu if ketu is in a strengthened state ketu generally gains strength in the 9th house in the 12th house and it is strengthened dignified in a very appropriate or favorable zodiac sign then in those kind of circumstances basis the aspiration inclination of native good results can be expected at that particular age of fortune awakening and friends for rahu and ketu one of the yogas which we know as the kal sarp yoga so kal sarp yoga is in a way when all the planets comes in the axis of rahu and ketu then in those kind of circumstances like for example i have seen all those charts where not only all the planets are concentrated or sitting in between rahu and ketu but in such a karmic way that rahu is in the ascendant uh, present in the ashwini like ketu's nakshatra in the 7th house for example ketu is uh, sitting in rahu's nakshatra in swati all the planets are sitting in the axis of in between rahu and ketu and even the moon nakshatra of the native is sadbisha of rahu then in those kind of circumstances you can fairly say that the grip of the karma or the karmic knot is so strong that the 42nd year of rahu's age of maturity can actually bring some very good result in the life of native depending on the aspiration of the native and you know even if you will take into consideration looking at the age of maturity of the planets basis all the concepts which we have studied so far if you will also calculate the dasha or the transit at that particular age you will also get some more contributing elements in determining that in which direction or from which direction success is going to come in the life of the native so this is something friends which i wanted to say as a part of my inputs on this concept of understanding your fortune awakening event or age or time of life for further more updates and notifications on the divine signs of astrology please subscribe to my youtube channel and like my facebook page thank you